Hi everybody, welcome to the eighth week of the spring 19 semester. Um, this eighth week means that we're right at the halfway point. So once we get to the end of this week, we'll be halfway finished with the semester. Also, when we get to the end of this week, next week is spring break. So bear that in mind when you, uh, if you try to sign in and look for a video next week that there are no classes next week, so there won't be a video and there won't be any assignments for this class either. So next week when spring break rolls around, it'll be spring break. You won't have to do anything as long as you're caught up in my class. For those of you that might be a little behind, um, you may use spring break as a way to try and get caught up a little bit. All right, so um, if I'm looking a little underdressed today, it's because um, this past weekend, I actually earned this shirt and this medal for completing a 26.2 mile marathon, part of which ran through both campuses of Albany State. Uh, the first uh, mile and a half or so go through the East Campus and uh, miles, I think it's seven and eight, go through the West Campus. So, um, hey, I've, I feel like I deserve the right to wear this t-shirt today and dress down, but I'll be back to my normal professional dress again after the uh, spring break is over. All right, this week's readings. You have two of them. Both of them by uh, female authors that were very popular in their time. One of them was Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, we're not going to read Charles Dickens this semester, unfortunately, because he didn't write a lot of short stories or any poems or anything like that. But Charles Dickens was one of the biggest authors of the Victorian period. And one of the jobs that he did was he actually was editor of some of the magazines where people would submit short stories or would submit, you know, the different chapters of the novels and something called serial publication, if you're interested. Um, and he actually um, has some favorites. And one of his was Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, what you're reading is uh, the old nurse's story. And it's a ghost story. And what you need to know about ghost stories in the Victorian period was they uh, didn't come out around Halloween because the Victorians didn't really celebrate Halloween. They came out around Christmas. And so every Christmas... These uh, literary magazines would have these uh, Christmas edi editions, but they didn't have stories of Santa Claus. They didn't have stories of, uh, you know, uh, anything Christmassy. They were all ghost stories. In fact, the most famous of those was written by Charles Dickens, and you've probably either read it or you've seen, you know, any one of a number of uh, film versions and television versions of it, and that is A Christmas Carol. That's the one with the ghosts of uh, Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future. Charles Dickens wrote that. Uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, who you're reading this week, was uh, one of his favorite writers. In fact, he called her his little Scheherazade. And if you don't know who Scheherazade is, she was the narrator of the Thousand and One Arabian Nights. Um, she, uh, she wrote the nurse's tale for that, and or the nurse's story. And what you need to know about the nurse's story is that it's a story of somebody who's been haunted her entire life by a decision she made as a very young lady and how that decision has haunted her uh, throughout her entire lifetime. And it takes the form of the ghost of a little girl. And so I think you're going to enjoy reading that one. Um, and the closing line is uh, very iconic. And so you may want to pay attention to that because, you know, it could be on the quiz or something like that. The other story you're going to read is Christina Rossetti's Goblin Market, and it is written as a poem. Uh, Goblin Market has a lot of parallels to the Garden of Eden. There is the young girl who is forced with temptation by an evil entity. Uh, there's the young girl given in to temptation and the consequences of that. Um, there's the garden setting. There is the you can eat anything you want except for the forbidden fruit kind of theme to this. The parallels between Goblin Market and the Garden of Eden story in Genesis are striking. In fact, it's very, very over, you know, beating you over the head with the parallels. And that's what Christina Rossetti wanted. She had written this poem for little girls as a warning to them not to give in to certain temptations. And those temptations could be sexual, but some people can also make the argument, and you can make a very successful argument, that it might have been a warning against taking illegal drugs. Uh, today's equivalent of that would be something like methamphetamines, but back in uh, Victorian time, opium was the drug of choice, and people would get addicted to that. So, um, you know, you can make the warning uh, that it's a warning not to give in a sexual temptation, or it could be a warning not to try these drugs and not to give in to them. So either way, um, it is certainly a warning to little girls, and it certainly plays upon the Garden of Eden story as a way to uh, 
get that point across. So uh, those are your two readings this week. Um, I think you're going to enjoy both of them. They're not quite as, you know, uh, dark as last week's readings with the Industrial Revolution. And um, I think you're going to enjoy writing these papers too. I've picked some questions or I've created some questions, if you will, that I think will uh, give you a chance to really express yourselves.